It's nothing unexpected that Samsung has supercharged the continuation. Fresh out of the box new quantum small scale, Drove Innovation is utilized in this board to convey critical improvements to SDR and HDR execution. Somewhere else, the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 actually presents its 49 in slanting, 32 to 9 perspective proportion, a tremendous goal, and a sensational 1000R bend in its mission to turn into the best gaming screen on the planet. The Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 is staggering. However, it is expensive. It's accessible for pre-request with a RRP of £1,849 in the UK. In the US, its RRP is a robust $2,499 and anticipate comparable evaluating in Europe. That is a few hundred pounds, dollars and euros more than the first G9. And it's pricier than its very good quality opponents as well. It's set to send off around the world on 9th August 2021. Design and Features Quantum small LEDs convey tremendous improvements to HDR and SDR activity. The vast structure factor and 240Hz refresh rate are perfect for gaming. It's strong and gorgeous, however lighting and availability could be better. The Samsung Odyssey Neo G9's greatest change is the transition to quantum small-scale drove innovation. Samsung's form of the smaller-than-usual drove equipment's causing disturbances in the television world. And this is whenever it showed up on a gaming first presentation. Smaller than usual LEDs enjoy a few benefits. The LEDs are minuscule. First off, permitting Samsung to incorporate a greater amount of them than with past innovation. There are 2048 of them in the Neo G9, and they capability as the board's backdrop illumination. This considers immense command over the haziest and lightest shades and in the middle between, in addition to they can be separately deactivated to convey awesome, nuanced dark levels and difference. They're more splendid than regular LEDs. Samsung claims 2000 nits, which is two times comparable to the last presentation, and it's a colossal improvement on the 10 diminishing zones of the G9. Those small LEDs stretch across the 49 in a skew in 32 to 9 angle proportion. The colossal width is splendid for dashing games and flight sims, where you get broad cockpit seats. Wide perspective proportions are great for RPG and experience titles since you benefit from broad skylines. In by far most of games, the Neo retains your consideration like nothing else. The structure factor additionally proves it's worth past gaming. One single screen is more viable than a multi-screen arrangement because of the improved consistency and absence of bezels. And the width is great for applications with level timetables. The ultra-wide structure factor functions admirably with numerous FPS titles, albeit a few games benefit from more upward space. The Neo isn't perfect in esports titles. By the same token, a few contests boycott ultra-wide shows, and moving your look all the more frequently will cost significant milliseconds. Additionally remember that you'll get dark bars down the sides of films and network programs. Neither of the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9's opponents have scaled down driven innovation, so they can't contend on that front. And those presentations both have 38 in designs, 21 to 9 angle proportions and 38 40x16o goals. You lose width, however you gain vertical pixels and a goal that more GPUs can deal with. The Neo's 5120x1440 goal stays from the first G9, it's as yet wonderful as could be. Remember that you'll require a reasonably bulky illustrations card to control this board, preferably a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 or RTX 3090 or an AMD Radeon RX 690 XT. The 1000R is as yet noteworthy a subsequent time round. It's more tight than the 2300R bend on the LG and Alienware boards, and it works really hard of agreeing with the natural eye to continue to see points reliable. The Neo purposes a VA board with a magnificent 1ms reaction time, and Samsung says it'll deliver 100% of the sRGB range and 90% of the DCI-P3 range. It utilizes 10-bit tone with 12-cycle profundity, which ought to convey smoother degree. The Neo runs at 240Hz with AMD FreeSync Pro and it's G-Sync viable, so you'll get smooth gaming on any GPU. Outwardly, the Neo actually has a smooth design, thin bezels at the front, and lustrous white plastic at the back. Construct quality is magnificent, in spite of the fact that you'll require a heavy work area to oblige the screen, which weighs 16.7 kilograms and is 1,151 millimeters wide. Like the G9, the Neo is precarious to fabricate thanks to an overflow of fiddly screws, yet it has 120 millimeters of level change close by turn, slant and 100 millimeters VESA mount support, which is more than whatever most ultra-wides have. Somewhere else, the on-screen show is smooth and supportive. The Neo has easy route buttons to switch between settings profiles, and it auto-switches between picture sources. Network is taken care of by two HDMI 2.1 ports, and a DisplayPort 1.4 association. 
Those HDMI ports are superior to the HDMI 2.0 attachments included with the primary G9. However, the display port attachment is as yet the main one to utilize. If you have any desire to partake in the Neo's unlocked set somewhere else, there are two USB 3.0 ports however no USB-C or thunderclap, which is disheartening. The lighting is somewhat disheartening as well. The Neo actually has its ring of RGB LEDs, however they're still just configurable in 52 tones. The full RGB drove range would be gladly received. The Neo likewise has an element called Core Sync, which matches the lights to the varieties produced in games. It should produce vivid surrounding lighting. However the lights are excessively far back in the board, and they're not sufficiently brilliant. Picture quality. The Neo G9 has unbelievable difference in profundity in SDR and HDR content. Colors are intense, accurate and lively. Games look awesome. Games run as expected. However, you'll require a powerful GPU to utilize this showcase, as well as involving my unaided eye for testing. I likewise utilized a colorimeter to decide the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9's benchmark results. In its processing plant SDR settings the Neo sits at a splendor level of 212 nits, with a dazzling dark place of 0.05 nits, and that conveys an exciting difference proportion of 4240 to 1. That is two times as great as the first G9 and shows how well those small LEDs work. The gigantic differentiation and profound dark point implies that games and movies have unbelievable punch, nuance and profundity. The Delta E of 1.9 guarantees precision and the variety temperature of 6192 Kelvin is fine. Those great variety figures were matched with amazing range capacity. The Neo delivered the sRGB range, with inclusion and volume levels of 99.5% and 129.4%, and it hurtled through the DCI-P3 at 91.5% and 91.6%. That implies tremendous dynamic quality in the sRGB space and enough profundity to deal with HDR content. The Neo has standard, quicker and outrageous reaction time choices. They're all incredible and all comparable. They're incapacitated in the event that you use adjusting, so stay with FreeSync or G-Sync. The Neo's 240Hz exhibition is quicker and smoother than its 144Hz adversaries, albeit higher refresh rates truly do convey unavoidable losses so the LG and Alienware gadgets stay smooth and entirely usable. The main gamers who won't be content are esports fans, who lean toward 360Hz boards. Finally, thanks for watching this video, see you again next time.